What's happening, friends? Welcome back to Dynamo DeFi. My name is Patrick, and on this channel, I talk about cryptocurrency, decentralized finance, and economics. With the crypto market trending downward recently, a lot of people have been feeling fear and uncertainty around their investments. However, this is the single best time to be researching new projects because you have a chance to sometimes get in at a heavily discounted price. In today's video, I'm going to show you some of the tools and strategies that I like to use to research new crypto projects and to find potential DeFi gems. None of these websites have any affiliation with me. These are just tools that I like to use. I'll also say that these same strategies could be used for metaverse NFT type projects, but my focus is on, is on DeFi. So I'm going to use DeFi examples when I talk about this. Cool. So let's jump right into it. The first website that I like to use, and this is essential if you're in DeFi, is DeFi Llama. DeFi Llama shows you the TVL across different protocols and chains. TVL, if you're not familiar, is just the total value locked in a DeFi protocol, and this could be money that's lent out, it could be liquidity that's provided on a DEX, it could mean different things depending on the protocol, but basically it's the amount of money deposited in that protocol. And so you can see here on the front page, we see the top protocols across every chain, and we see the one day chain, the seven change, the seven day change, the one month change, the TVL, and the market cap divided by the TVL. And, and all of these are useful for different things. If you go down on the side here, we also have a breakdown by chain. And this is oftentimes the first place I go to. And so this will show you the changes in TVL grouped by chain and also the dominance of different chains. So over here, we, for example, can see the percentage that every chain has. And if we go down, we can see, let's sort it by total TVL. We can see the amount that Ethereum has, Terra Luna, Phantom, BSC, etc. And then we can see, again, their changes over time. And if you were to go to the left here, you could see some other, some other tools. For example, a breakdown of DEXs, of assets, of blending platforms. There's a tool to compare different platforms. Lots of useful things that you can dive into on this website. The way that I use it is I usually start by looking for protocols that have had sustained TVL growth recently. And the reason I look at those is because those are ones that it's not just a one day flash in the pan. It's something that has actually managed to attract users and continue to attract them over at least a month long period. So what I like to do is look at things that are green, both on the one week and the one month. Because that means that it has some sustained momentum. And sometimes the one week can be red. So for example, if we look here, Phantom obviously is green across all three. And it's, and it's actually the number three chain right now. Osmosis, on the other hand, is only green on one day and one month. But that one month is pretty significant. And that might give you a clue that you wanted to look up into whether Osmosis and the Cosmos ecosystem had some momentum. So another thing that I like to do sometimes is to filter or if not filter by, but sort by these things. So you might see something like Metis or Fuse and see that these had grown a lot. And I'm not saying you should invest in these necessarily, especially with the market being shaky, but this would be a starting point for your research where you'd say, okay, Metis TVL is 240 million up a lot, burst onto the scene. And the market cap is not much higher than that. So for a chain, a market cap of 200 some million is is uh, relatively modestly sized. It's not, not a micro cap, of course, but it's relatively modest. So so if you were to get in now and then this became a major chain, then you would still be getting in early. And I'm not saying that you should be getting into Metis, but you might see this and then you would decide to research it and decide whether it was something you wanted to invest in. Uh, the first place I go once I decide on that is I click into the chain a bit to see what's driving the growth. So for example, if we now were to click into Metis, you can see it had growth over a decently long period, over a month, and then uh, it started to dip with the rest of the market. And then go in here and see, well, most of these platforms are totally new, but NetSwap is driving the most of it. So the first thing you might want to do is then look at NetSwap and, and see whether that was something that you wanted to invest in or wanted to learn more about. And these are just starting points for your research. I'm guessing NetSwap is probably the DEX for Metis. Another thing that I like to do is go to the overview of everything and look at which protocols have been gaining TVL recently and also look at whether there's anything that jumps out that just is higher ranked than you would expect. So for example, multi-chain I see here is 
has grown the past week and month. So both of those criteria. And also I would say, well, you know, multi-chain is a bridge, uh, but the market cap is pretty low. It's, you know, not in the top 100. I don't even know if it's in the top 200, but it's placed along protocols that almost everyone knows like Aave, Anchor, Uniswap, etc. cetera. Yeah, so, so I might say, well, you know, that's one I want to dive into more and learn about their tokenomics. Is there a reason that the token isn't more valuable or is it maybe something that the market hasn't caught on to yet? Uh, going down the list, we can see, for example, 0x DAO. That's what's driving a lot of the growth on Phantom. This relates to that new NFT that's being airdropped to the top 20 protocols. We have Frax. So this is a stablecoin platform. And FXS is their investable token. And you can see here it's grown almost 90% over the past month and 31% over the past week. And that's when the market hasn't been doing well. So so one might look into this and say, well, you know, Frax has some good momentum, even in a down market. That's something I want to research more. And, and this is both these examples I've given multi-chain and Frax are both some of the projects that I've researched recently. I've been researching a few projects a day, not investing in all of them, but, but researching a few a day while the market has been down. And that's basically in a nutshell, how I would use DeFi Llama. Last thing I would say is that this market cap per TVL can be very useful if you use it correctly what you be, want to be careful not to do is you don't want to compare different categories of tokens. So for example, Uniswap and SushiSwap might be a good ca comparison, even though they have different tokenomics, because you would say, well, they're both DEXs, so they probably have similar levels of value capture from their TVL or levels of ability, at least to capture value. Similarly, you might compare MakerDAO and Abracadabra because they both have stable coins. However, you would not want to compare Aave and Uniswap because the ability of a lending platform to capture value is not necessarily the same as the ability of a DEX to capture value. They're just different categories of DeFi projects. And as we'll see in a second, when we look at revenue, Uniswap actually has much more revenue than, than Aave. So, so that thesis does hold true there. And there's actually a lot, several DEXs that have more revenue than Aave just because DEXs are better at extracting value from their TVL. Great. So that is DeFi Llama. The next platform that I like to look at is Token Terminal. Token Terminal shows you the revenue across different blockchains and dApps. So this can similarly be useful for developing a thesis about which types of protocols extract value. And also it can be helpful for finding things that again, might be undervalued. We can see here, we see the top across everything, including chains. Ethereum is much higher than everything else. Uh, let's filter to dApps. And you can see the top is actually Axie Infinity, followed by OpenSea. And, and the interesting thing about this is that Axie Infinity has been the top here since its market cap was way, way lower. So I just realized that you can't see the name Axie Infinity, but there we go. So so since it was way lower, it's been the top there. And, uh, and, and the, the thing about this is that at the time, that would have been a great signal that Axie was undervalued because... It, because you could have seen, well, it's bringing all this revenue, but the market cap just is not there. Now you might look at this and you might say, okay, well, pancake swap, you know, I, I'm not invested in Binance Smart Chain right now, but you might say, okay, well, Pan pancake swap, although it's not what everyone's talking about, it's actually bringing in a lot of money. Similarly, Curve, right? Curve is bringing in more money than Sushi Swap, more money than Aave, more money than Compound. Like it's a, it's it's a uh, top DeFi project. Yearn is bringing in even more than Curve. Isn't that interesting? So, so, so it's just interesting to see the comparison between these compared to what their market cap is. Uh, and then if you go down here, you can see it broken down even further. Uh, and, and one thing to, to separate here is they have a tab for total revenue and also for protocol revenue. Protocol revenue is basically revenue that's captured in some form for token holders, which is what the difference is. But you can again see the trends over time, which is very useful similar to TVL. And one thing that's also interesting is you can see if you go to protocol revenue, you can see the PE ratio, which is interesting because, uh, you know, a lot of these DEXs actually have PE ratios that would be considered fairly conservative in traditional finance and equities. Trader Joe, for example, has a PE ratio of under seven. And I'm not saying you should necessarily invest in Trader Joe or any of these coins, of course, uh, but but that might be a good clue that you wanted to investigate this project further and see what is its growth potential, 
what are they what new things are they adding to the project is the team good is there a reason why it is not valued higher because you have to always consider that maybe the market is right and and it's just a, overall a great starting point to find undervalued projects and and uh, they don't have everything on here but if you go down you can see a lot of smaller projects as well that have that have revenue in here and not all of them though that is token terminal very very useful final tool that i like to use or at least of my favorite tools is dap radar the useful thing with dap radar is that it actually shows you the users across different platforms so it tells you the number of users and to find that you go to the rankings section they have a DeFi section as well but i, th I think DeFi llama does what they're trying to do here better but if you go to the ranking section you can see users and you can see for example pancake swap has a ton of users and and if you filter to DeFi, then specifically you can see DeFi projects and so trader joe for example has a ton of users katana which is the dex on ronin which is the x infinity chain has a ton of users again that might be a a tip off right there where you say okay so so the ronin dex is actually has more users for example than sushi swap and 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 why is that you know that that's a good starting point and and overall it's just another good metric to add to your arsenal as you're investigating things and sometimes it doesn't mean you investigate in these you invest in these specific platforms but it can give you a hint in the right direction to go uh, one other thing that's good to know here is that exchanges for is important because for some reason some DeFi projects are on exchanges some are on DeFi. i don't really know why but but here's a good example so uniswap v2 and v3 if you were to sum these up that's about eighteen thousand users if we go to DeFi, we can see that believe it or not trader joe actually has more users and you know you might then combine that with our the our findings on revenue earlier and you might look at those together then you might also go investigate tvl and do research on the dev team and decide whether or not to invest to invest in trader joe and that's basically how i would use dap radar in a nutshell and you can use this for gaming and other types of projects as well and so uh once i've done these things what would i do basically what, what i would do after this is i would go to the projects website is the first place i go so let's look at frax because that one jumped out for us before when we were looking at tvl and uh and, and i would just open their application and see how it was and, and you know sometimes the best person to trust is yourself and your own eyes most of my best findings in cryptocurrency you know when i found osmosis over the summer when, when i started using luna relatively early avalanche early it was just because i tried out using the blockchain or using an application i said wow this is a great product to use and and sometimes you just got to tr trust your own mind and say if it's useful to you it's probably going to be useful to other people as well so so i would go here i would check out all these different features see what they all do think about how i would use it and and if i liked what i saw then i would also go in and i would find the documentation and i would start reading the white paper not everyone does this uh, and you don't necessarily need to memorize this although i think it would probably be help the more white papers you can read the more you'll learn about crypto but specifically what i would want to do here is i'd want to go to the information about their token because you are looking at investing and i'd want to understand what's the utility of their token how are they releasing it and how does it accrue value from the platform if it does uh, and then the other thing that i'd want to see is i'd want to find the tokenomics so here for example if we go to token distribution of xs fxs then we could see how much is distributed to the community versus the team and investors and we can find out their strategy for unlock and the important thing with this is that sometimes there can be good projects that have bad tokenomics so so it's important that if you find something that's a red flag you accept that it may invalidate your thesis and, and i'm not saying that about that about frax because the video is not about frax it's just an example but but this is basically the process that i would go through when i'm researching a project and that's all i got for today DeFi llama for tvl token terminal for revenue dap radar for users and that's going to get you far ahead of most people in terms of doing your own research if you have any other tools or strategies you use be sure to drop them in the comments and if you enjoyed this video please like subscribe and follow me on twitter till next time this is dynamo DeFi.